You've said that you're 100% behind Gary Lineker. Why is that? In terms of impartiality, I don't know when the BBC have ever been impartial. In fact, BBC's reporting on the Qatar World Cup was anything but impartial. So it seems that they want to pick and choose when they want to be impartial. Criticising others or criticising other countries or other political parties or other religions seems to be okay. But of course, if you then criticise what goes on in this country, then it seems that they will then come out with this impartiality rule. The second thing, which a lot of people took um, offence to, is, is the perception that Gary was, was equating um, Britain to, to Nazi Germany, which he wasn't. What he said was the language used regarding the refugees is similar to the language used in 1930s Germany, which it was. And of course, we can see how that ended up. And I'm, Gary is not saying, I'm not saying that that's how it's going to end up. But of course, the language used in terms of creating this perception of an unworthy refugee, very much like the Jews were unworthy um, to be German and Germans were better than Jews. That was the language that was used. And that's what we're saying here. We're talking about the, 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 the refugees coming over and the language used towards the refugees coming over on boats in terms of them being rapists, in terms of them being criminals, is different to the refugees from the Ukraine. And that is what we have to, to, to address. And that is what I want Gary and everybody supporting him to talk about. Us talking about the worthiness of different groups of people. Because that's how discrimination starts. Be it men, women towards uh, v men in terms of the worthiness of a woman towards a man. Blacks towards whites. Gays towards straight people. And a Syrian refugee coming over on a boat as in relation to a Ukrainian refugee coming over. We don't hear a language from the Ukrainian refugees situation talking about rapists and murderers, but we hear it about the Iraqis and the Syrians. And that's what I would like Gary and people to talk about, the worthiness of everybody, including the, the Syrian refugees, in relation to the Ukrainian refugees. Look, you raised some really important points and points that many people are going to have strong views about, right? But I guess what some would argue is that is Gary Lineker the right person to be entering this debate? He's paid licence fee money, uh, he is presenter of the BBC's flagship uh, programme. Is it right that this kind of political uh, uh, debate should be entering the world of sport? Should Gary Lineker, would, would Gary Lineker be the right person to talk about the LGBTQ rights and human rights in Qatar? We can't have it both ways, we accept that. So why can't he talk about it here? So this is the point I'm making about impartiality, and we're saying that stick to sports. But when we want to criticize other countries or other religions, we then say, yes, let the sports people come out and talk about that, but don't criticize what goes on in this country. We can't have it both ways. Uh, interesting. Uh, you're talking there about the sort of double standards and what you would see uh, as you can't have it both ways, certainly. Um, we've seen a wave of sports presenters, commentators refusing uh, to appear on the BBC in support of Gary Lineker. Do you think that they're right to do that? Well, of course, if that's what they believe and they believe in what Gary is talking about, I'm not supporting Gary because I'm Gary's friend or I played with him. I'm supporting him because I believe it's right to do. But as I said, let's not make this and this should not be about Gary Lineker and the BBC pundits supporting him. This should be about the refugees and them coming over. And that's the conversation that should be had. Now, this is a distraction to and I suppose the government is quite happy with this, a distraction to the cost of living crisis, a distraction to, you know, the working conditions for the nurses and, 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 and railway workers and postal workers. So this is probably quite welcome because of course no one's now talking about real issues you know because this really is just a sideshow and it's inconsequential and it's meaningless but we've had three or four days and it will continue to run and i think it's quite a welcome distraction to real to real issues from the government how do you see it being resolved because you have got uh, the people who are supporting gary Lineker refusing to if you like cross the invisible picket line you've got the director general of the bbc apologizing where does this go well, of course, a compromise will be had. Um, they'll come back together. The profile of lots of people will be raised. The profile of the BBC will be raised and they'll do the right thing. And it'll be the state of call will resume very shortly with everybody being happy. Do you think that the BBC guidelines themselves need to be uh, looked at? Perhaps it's a bit of unclarity, uh, shall we say, a lack of clarity in the guidelines themselves. Absolutely, it's very ambiguous. And of course, Gary is also freelance. So as to whether he is fully employed by the BBC, so he's able to say things. And I suppose Gary probably thought, well, if I'm in Qatar talking about human rights abuses, then why can't I talk about what I believe to be right here as well? So I think there's a lot of ambiguity to it. And of course, you can, I'm not a lawyer, but you can pick different things out of out of contracts and say, yes, you're allowed to, but you're not allowed to. And everybody has an argument. So, you know, um, how can you become more clear uh, without saying you're completely impartial, you can't mention it at all, even in your private life, even if you're a freelance. Uh, but as I said, I'm just sad that this has been going on for so long when we have many more issues uh, to talk about. Have you had a call to present Match of the Day? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, uh, I think they've lost my number. I'm, I'm <laughs> called by many people for many years. You know what, <laughs> if you volunteer to do it now, I bet they'll be on the phone straight away.
would you do it? Well, only because there's no, only because there's nobody else. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it. Presenting, if I was able to present, I would think about it. But I can't. my presenting days are over. Um, but I suppose that anybody who's going to be doing it now is because there's nobody else to do it who can do it. <laughs> but I won't <laughs> be one of them, no. Thank you very much. Uh, good to talk to you uh, today, John Barnes. <laughs>